Hello everybody, this is Nia Boaz Filer. I'm here with the weekly astrological message for the week between the 19th and the 27th of, I'm sorry, the 26th of September 2020. We are reaching the fall equinox, the autumnal equinox in the northern hemisphere and the vernal equinox, the spring equinox in the southern hemisphere. Traditionally, this has been a time for ceremonies, for reckoning, for preparing ourselves to the winter or preparing ourselves to the renewal of spring. So wherever you are around the globe, when the vernal equinox hits you, either on the 21st or the 22nd of September, according to your times, this would be an amazing time to set some intentions and do a small ceremony. <coughs> The story of the sky this week is about Mercury. Mercury is going to be T-squaring um, or involved in a T-square with Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn, and Mars. Definitely a week in which our communication and navigation and commerce with our environments are all up to a judgment and maybe even a conflict. This is a time that different opinions can erupt and we are creating a new world as the old world no longer takes uh, um, um, validation and credence as it used to. And new rules, new rules are shaped. We could see different pressure groups pushing and, uh, towards shaping this new world and their image. So this is definitely a time of exchange of ideas and words, but it could be also a conflicting time. A time that, hello Georgia, walking in the background. This could be a time in which we really need to watch how we communicate and how we exchange ideas and navigate through our lives and what really should be um, maintained and uh, addressed and what should be cleansed out what should be mended what can we actually take out of our life that would cause us to live in a healthier manner this is about reckoning along with the new moon that came a few days back and Virgo trining Saturn definitely a time to heal and to prepare a new base for the times ahead, to take the responsibility needed to align ourselves and grow through this new time. It's a combative alignment in the sky and we need to watch that um, kind of uh, need to react and to state things and to put them straight and to be harsh judges ourselves, both towards ourselves or others, through this time. So, <clears throat> on the 19th, let's, let's leave the 19th alone because, um, because we uh, probably, well, you know what, on the 19th, there's a, a day in the sky that could be turbulent and to dramatic if we don't watch it. It's a day in which that harsh judgment and some kind of an obsessive drama can float out of us and as long as we are aware of it we could actually utilize this day to understand ourselves deeper, to provide more authenticity into our life and go through transformative emotional processes in a positive way. Sunday the 20th Again, still an intense energy in the sky. It's a sensitive day with relationships, especially the nighttime. Then Monday, the 21st, already has a much nicer energy in the sky on all accounts. But it is the day in which Mercury squares Pluto. And that effect is something that is here throughout the week, but is most intense throughout that day. It's a time in which our communications can become too intense and dramatic and really we could, as I said, utilize that to understand our psychological needs or to find out revelations that have been hidden from us, either 
about how we think and, and shape our navigation through the world or about things that we thought are true but now understand are false, that we go deeper, we could have revelations or things found out on a public level as well. Tuesday the 22nd is the day that the sun steps into the sign of Libra. Happy birthday all you beautiful eyed Libras. Um, this is the time that we officially go into autumn and the northern hemisphere of this world and into spring in the southern hemisphere. Um, great time to have ceremonies. Eastern European time that would be exactly at 4 30 p.m. on the 22nd. Uh, Wednesday the 23rd good day in the sky generally but again Mercury which is the story of the week squares Saturn exactly so we have to be careful not to be too harsh and not to be too judgmental and not to be too um, rigid with our communications and our thoughts and our words with the, the way we do commerce with the world and that comes into an even closer uh, observation the day after when Mercury is going to oppose Mars exactly. And that's a real conflict already of ideas and words that we need to be more careful of in our lives and make sure that we are not creating individualiz individualization processes in our lives unnecessarily. This is definitely a time that our mind could be much more uh, independent. We could have independent thoughts and we could have this need to set people straight and correct them if we feel they are speaking about something that is unjust or untrue. So watch that. Watch how you react. <coughs> um, Friday the 25th, beautiful morning with the moon conjunct Jupiter. Great time to be outside to enjoy uh, either spiritual, philosophic or um, even um, artistic activities. Um, just rejoining with Source and as the night draws throughout Friday Eastern European time the moon is going to conjunct Pluto. Much more intense, dramatic time emotionally but great for intimate uh, um, intimate uh, you know intimacy <laughs> and Saturday the 26th moon conjunct Saturn a bit of a downer that day and and it squares squares Mars so don't let your mood affect you or the mood of people around you affect you keep it cheery and up and once uh, it turns to afternoon it looks a lot brighter in the sky and a lot nicer in the sky and all that uh, dark cloud uh, moves away of course I'm talking Eastern European time if you are in Australia move it about nine hours ahead if you are in the States about nine hours back still 25% on all my courses and meetings through zoom especially for my community at these times of Corona. So if you want to book a consultation or a course or a private lesson, contact me. Don't do it through my site. And before we end, I want to say something very important. A lot of you have been exposed to a lot of conspiracy theories throughout these last couple of years. There's so much false information there. And as ancient Mulder in X-Files used to say the best place to place a lie is between two truths so I want you to make sure you understand that there's only two poles we could stem out from in this world either love or fear and this is the money time this is what's going to um, determine if we go down or up because we can go up together we cannot preach to the choir we need to actually negotiate with the people who think differently and reach a common ground as this world reshapes itself. And yes, there are a lot of people in this world that stand to lose a lot from this new world, a lot of power, a lot of money, a lot of influence. 
and they would probably do a lot to keep that money and power and influence but they are human beings just like you and me are they have families and dreams and aspirations and hopes and fears and traumas and they do want to make this a better world even if they do think differently any concept any theory that demonizes other people that causes us to fear other people and divides us between us and them stems out of fear and if you are watching these kinds of theories and listening to them don't be surprised that you are more feel of more filled with trepidation and fear and anxieties and it hinders your ability to act to act and influence in the things that really need your help right now really need your action right now really need your influence right now because we need to change them it actually doesn't empower you but this powers you I want to state and I want to state it clear listen I've been before in a, I've been an astrologer I was a media advisor for NGOs non-governmental organizations that's NGOs I was working with UNICEF UNESCO um, the UN, the Israeli government, political parties, the federal government, the World Bank, the uh, a World Health Organization. I know these places from within. I know the people in these places. I know their ideals. I know what the systems are there for. And many times have I rebelled against them. Many times have I stated what I think is incorrect in these circles and stressed what needs to be changed. Nevertheless, demonizing people and thinking that there is a shadow government that wants to inseminate us with chips through vaccines and chemtrails and um, control our minds and dilute the population. Come on, what kind of nightmare do you want to live in? There is no shadow government. Nobody wants to put a chip and control your mind in you. Don't you have enough to fear with everything that is going on? You want to add some to it? In these corporations, in these governments, in these international bodies, there are men and women just like you and me. And some of them, as I said, stand to lose quite a lot from the changes coming. And they will fight to keep that power. Nevertheless, they are human just like you and me. And there is no agenda by any demon to do those things. And by listening to those rumors, you are actually giving power to darkness, not to light. Because... It causes you not to act on the subjects that need us the most. So, that's what I wanted to say. And this is a good time to say it with this T-square with Mercury, Mars, and Pluto, Jupiter, and Saturn. It's time to set things straight. And I hope that uh, I want to bless you for the Hebrew New Year coming at this time at the equinox. May we all have a beautiful new year. May we make the most in the most positive, enlightened manner of who we are and the fact that we are here. May we be healthy and happy. Amen. May we live long and prosper. Bye-bye.